Okay, so the little talk that I have today, like it's very short. I believe it will be short. It's about untrained soldiers that are in a battle. Um, it's just to encourage us, that's all. There's nothing uh, that I can say. I, I can see, like that I can see, I, I saw that pushed me to say this message. It's just that sometimes I move through the day and so forth, and sometimes during prayer, the Lord just puts a message you know, in my heart and says, just remind them of this, and I have to remind it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's one thing I have to do, I have to remind. So about untrained soldiers that are in a battle, just for us to get a little bit of understanding of what I'm talking about, uh, think about a war. There are two sides. Maybe let's say Russia is fighting with uh, Iraq, and both kingdoms are fighting. There are two kingdoms, right? So both kingdoms are fighting, and then there are two ways in which an untrained soldier can land in the field. The first one is if one kingdom loses its own soldiers, so they will have to be forced to pick any civilian, and just give them a gun and say go, <laughs> go and shoot. And then, but that is not the case I'm talking about today. Then the second case is when that kingdom has provided enough time, has provided enough resources for the people, for the soldiers, and having provided enough now, the soldiers were not training. They went to a camp, they went to a training camp, they never trained. The time they reach a time where they say, now you should be ready to go and fight. They are not even ready. They still need to learn how to hold a gun. Instead of knowing how to shoot at the, at, at the target, they still learn to uh, load the gun. You know, it's, it's, it's painful. So, that somehow it's most of us as Christians. Paul also spoke about this to the Hebrews. I'll just read one of the verses you will notice. He said, when you ought to be teachers, it is when now you still need to be retaught the very principles of God. Meaning there is a time where you reach, you should be ready, but we are not. Why? Because we have been playing all along. Like we have been playing. Playing, playing without any purpose. You wake up in the morning, you do the very same thing. No reading of the Bible. No engaging in prayer. Nothing. When it comes to fast, fasting, you find it's been months and years having not fasted. Maybe we don't understand why we are fasting. It's fine if we don't understand. We blame the teachers, yes. <laughs> Just teach the word. It's fine. But not engaging in these things, yet we, we expect to be experts in the word. We are expecting to, to be... Uh, warriors when we come to war. You know, we, we, we are in a battle, we are in war. Actually, Paul says, says, said that to the Ephesians. He said, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual principalities. And before I go far, let's just read the verses um, in a series that I've actually planned. Um, Ephesians, well, we are reading the very first one, Ephesians 6, verse um, 13. Ephesians 6, verse 13. Um, I'll just read it from verse 12, just so that we have, or from verse 11, much perfect from there, I think. It says, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the evil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the dark age of this world against spiritual wickedness in the highest place wherefore take unto you the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done so so stand i'll just stop it there it will tell you what what those weapons or what those what that armor is but these three verses are are not a suggestion. Paul is not suggesting or putting on the menu of a Christian to say you can choose to do these things. No, that's that's a must. You know, 
It's something that once you get into Christ, you belong to the kingdom of Christ. And therefore, automatically, without even you wanting it, without you liking it, without even thinking about it, automatically you are in war with the opposition, which is the devil. When you are in the kingdom of the devil, automatically you are in war with the kingdom of God. That's how it is. If two kingdoms are fighting and you are a citizen of one of them, you are also in war, whether you are carrying a gun or not. Because when they fight you, when they find you, they are going to deal with you. That's one thing I know. So, this verse now, just three verses, the three of them, verse 11, is highlighting something which is very important. It is saying to us, we have to put the whole armor of God. And we can guess, what is armor for? Armor is for war, right? It's for battles, it's for fighting. Armor is not for sleeping. Can I say, put on the whole armor of sleeping? I can't say that. Armor is for fighting. And to see that, you can check the armor as they're explaining those six things, six critical things. Uh, the breastplate, they're talking about the belt, they're talking about the shoes, they're talking about the sword, they're talking about the helmet, they're talking about the shield. So all those things are weapons, are things that are used in war. And if you look at all the six of them, once you miss one, you are not really fully equipped. Now focus on yourself. Have you worn the, the helmet of salvation as yet? What is it? What does it mean? Are you having the sword? And not just having it, are you able to use that sword? If not, then you are part of the untrained, uh, untrained soldiers which are in war. Because Paul here doesn't say, we will be in war against the spiritual principalities. He says, we are. Every day, the devil does not sleep. He says, he's hovering around him, looking for whom he may devour. He's fighting day and night. And when I read the book of Revelation, it's, it's very painful. You know? When I look at all those tribulations coming about, first trumpet, second, third, all those sounding and great things are coming to earth and destroying the third of earth, then the highlight of all those verses comes to say, still, the people did not worship God. Then at the end of it all, after the seventh trumpet was uh, has sounded, the scriptures say, then those who remained and didn't die, they then worshipped God. That's when God stopped and, and, uh, and judgment came. After the great judgment came, that's when we had new earth and new heaven. So all these tribulations were brought because God was bringing the people to know him. You look at uh, 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 Israel in Egypt. Why were those things happening? The dust rising up to become mosquitoes, the river turning into blood, the darkness in three days, rain coming down in, in, in fire, all those things. Why were they there? It was to show that God is God. God said it. He says, go and do it so that they will see that I am the Lord. So God is trying to open our eyes, but we don't want to see. That's why all these things are happening. And Hosea even explains it very nicely. He says, um, God has torn us. And if we go to him, he's the only one who can heal us. Therefore, let's go to him. So why did he tear us apart? You go to Hosea 5. He's explaining, he says, these people have turned away from me. Thus, I am going back to my place and I will send a snare unto them so that they will seek me early because in pain they will seek me early. But the tragedy is even in pain, some don't seek him. That's a tragedy. Now, not focusing on that, but looking at the soldiers now, those who say, now I am born again. Now I am a soldier of Christ. Do you know how to use the weapons that we have there in Christ? Like the helmet of salvation. Do you even know what it is? <laughs> because those are the traits of untrained soldiers. Untrained soldiers don't even know what the school bag is for. If a soldier is untrained, they are giving them a school bag full of granite. Once they feel it heavy, they take it off. And they want to go free because they don't understand the very importance of what they are carrying. They are carrying AK-47. It's very heavy. You don't see any enemies around you. You throw it away. You want to be left with that M5 so that uh, it is not heavy. 
So the minute we don't understand the purpose of a certain thing, it's very easy for us to discard it. You know? To just take it aside and say, no, this thing is not needed now. Just like the word of God. Sometimes we find no use for it. We find in our mind, we think, ah, the word of God is just uh, for reading and arguing with others and that's all. No, that's not the case. The word of God is a sword, actually. If you read Hebrews, it says it is sharper than any double-edged sword. It is sharper than it. So it is very powerful. If you look at the scriptures, Jesus Christ never fought demons uh, using fists or what. He used weights, which was the word of God. So it shows the very word of God is very, very powerful. So now if we are carrying that sword, we are carrying it, but we don't know how to use it. It's the same as not having it. Like a soldier having AK-47, enemies come, they just finish him. Because he doesn't know how to shoot. So have we become those soldiers indeed? And if we have become those untrained soldiers, are we to blame the master for not training us? Or are we to blame ourselves for not agreeing to train? Because God says, let the words of this book not depart away from your eyes. What does that mean? It is his instruction. He's telling you, every day, wake up at five and do this. It's like a training camp. But what do we do? Take a month without reading it. Then are we again to blame the very owner? I mean, the very uh, God who actually has commanded us of these things, the very trainer himself, which actually is the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, we have been trained. I'll just read a few verses. You will notice a few things, actually, about this training that we are going through. Because the immediately when you are born again, you are not ready. That's a fact. You are not ready to engage in the spiritual matters. What we are doing, you are learning. That learning is called training. It says you have to eat milk. Milk is training. So when you were supposed to be now teaching the very weight, teaching others how to use a gun, you still don't know how to hold it. <laughs> All you have is, yeah, I know this is a gun. But of how to shoot it, no, no knowledge. It's, it's the pity. It's, it's painful, actually. And looking at this armor that they are talking about, um, it says this armor is not for fighting the flesh, but it is for fighting the spirit. We are fighting the spiritual realm. And that is the war we are in. Paul here he speaks, the, the, the word that was used here, I liked it because it says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities. If you look at wrestling, it doesn't have many rules. In. There you can use anything. In wrestling, you find a hammer, you pick it up, you beat someone. You find an axe, you pick it up, you beat someone. So you utilize whatever this, that is in your exposure. Then now we look at the weapons that we are having. What else is powerful than them? There's nothing powerful than the weight. It says heaven and earth shall pass away. If the very weapons that are around shall pass away, and the very weapon that you have shall not pass away, then why not learn how to use it? And you know learning doesn't come up in one night. You have to learn every day. You have to learn each and every day. Become like, become uh, do not become disobedient to the very instructions which are given in the very use of the weight, which is the sword. Because the weight itself, it tells you how to read it. It tells you how to hold it. It tells you how to treat it. It says every day, day and night, meditate upon it, day and night. Then it says a man shall not live by bread alone but also by the weights that come from the mouth of God. So one morning you want to have breakfast also. You just wake up, read the weight, and you feel your stomach is full. You'll be surprised how. I see that every time. Before I come to the session, I'm very hungry. When I leave, I don't want to eat. So you are telling me that the weight is not actually food? It is. And even better food. You know? uh, let's just read another verse about these uh, untrained soldiers. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, just to strengthen or harden the very um, statement that I want to place forth. 2 Timothy 2, verse 4. <clears throat> now it tells you something which is very painful. 
it says no man that is in war or and it says no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen me to be a soldier i don't know this version of mine you know is not as clear as, as, as you might like can we have maybe another version yeah no maybe um and iv i think is much good yeah. no one civilian as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs ah. he wants to please his commanding officer now that that, that is it's, it's it's shocking when i i listen to that it's shocking at the same time it, it gladdens my heart you know it says no one like no one no one it doesn't say some people maybe it says no one if you are in the serious matters of god it says you shouldn't be entangling yourself with the affairs of this life you are looking one morning you wake up sick are you going to curse god for that if you do you are entangling yourself in the matters of this world of this life because sickness is nothing but just one of the things brought in in the war we are in because you wake up one morning at least you, you open the window and the devil fled egg uh, got in and makes you to get a little disease nyan. instead of fighting it back with weights how, how did jesus christ heal the sick because by healing the sick the devil was uh, got a hold of the people he thought the way he is because the devil what he does is dominion to have power over someone so once he possess you or he he is on you he will he will try to make sure that he controls you so he was controlling some back then what did jesus do he freed them how did he use fist no just the weight that that's a weapon he just said your faith has healed you by just speaking you read about that woman who was uh, having an issue of blood for 12 years what did jesus say because he healed her after she was healed the priests were fighting said why have you healed a person on sabbath then the comment of jesus said satan has bound this woman for 12 years what does that tell you the war that we are in some of us are being held captive we are taken into captivity by the devil of which jesus christ has come on earth to free the captivity you read isaiah 61 even in uh, luke chapter 4 the, his first sermon he said the spirit of the lord is upon me and he has sent me to go and set the captivity free what captivity the captivity in the opposite kingdom and when he sent his disciples out it says he gave them power over spirits over demons why over demons he gave them power authority over the enemy hence paul comes again in in the book of romans uh, chapter 8 verse 37 he says we are more than conquerors we are more than winners we are not just winners we are more than conquerors so in this war we are in we are warring against the devil but we are winners only if we know how to war against him only if we know how to war because imagine we don't know how to use the weight we don't know how uh, to use faith because uh, uh, ephesians regards faith as a shield he says the very faith is a shield when the devil is throwing things at you, you block his uh, attacks with, with, with what? With, a, with faith, which is a shield. Then from there, how do you attack back? You use the weight. And when you use the weight, the devil won't sit around. I promise you. He won't sit any longer. Look at Jesus Christ. The devil was there, tried him. Jesus Christ used the weight. The devil never came, up, came back again. <laughs> then later on, when Jesus Christ is walking to a certain place, the devil is recorded. Uh, 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 they noticed him they said we know this man they even prayed to him they said please don't take us to uh, the pit as yet they prayed imagine the enemy praying please don't kill us as yet it's better you put that in this place that's what they did now you you think about the authority that christ had we have it also he has given us that authority but do we know how to use it untrained soldiers having all the resources having all the weapons we have nuclear bombs which the devil doesn't have but we don't know how to utilize them instead we are killing each other and traits of untrained soldiers uh, 
their characteristics are very painful, you know. Very painful. Because one of them is that untrained soldiers end up fighting themselves. They are not united. In a training camp, they teach you unity. If you are untrained, tomorrow morning I see you, you are, you are carrying a walkie-talkie and I don't have it. I will fight you. Of which you are supposed to use it and I'm supposed to be using another thing which is different from me. Because soldiers don't use the same thing, all of them. There's a soldier who will, there are rings even. There's a soldier who will be using a, a telephone to communicate with the commanding officer. There's a soldier who will be using the map. They are trained in that. They will be telling us where we are supposed to be going. There's a soldier who will be having the microscopes and so forth. So if one soldier wants to have all those things, it shows they are not trained at all. One soldier wants to use all type of guns. There, there are soldiers who carry bazookas. It's very heavy. <laughs> it's very heavy when you're walking around. But if you want to be that soldier, it shows that you are untrained. You don't know your peoples in that, tree, in that war. You don't know your position. If you go to Ephesians, it tells you that Jesus Christ, when he went up, he freed the, captive, uh, the captivity, and then he gave gifts unto men. At the end of that verse, he's telling us why did he give gifts? It says some he gave them to be pastors, some to be uh, prophets, some to be evangelists. Then at the end, it says for the perfecting of the work of the saints until the man shall reach the perfect statue of God, of Christ. So all these works, they are different. But there is one source of them. And what, what is the purpose of all this work? Is for us to be united. And not just united, but you be united against the enemy. Jesus Christ said a kingdom that is divided against itself shall never stand. So the dangers of being untrained is that we, we start fighting. You look at the weight. I read one verse, I think it this way. Another person reads a verse, think it that way. Because our thoughts are not the same, we start fighting. Are we our own enemies? No. The fact is, we are not trained. We don't know how to utilize the weight. The fact that you have a different thought from mine doesn't give it the ground for me and you to fight. And once we fight, the enemy is no longer fighting now. He will just sit there and watch a match of a kingdom that is divided against its own self. So those are the dangers, you know, of being untrained. Because you don't notice who you are fighting with. You end up taking your very own brother as a traitor. And even killing them. And another one of untrained soldiers um, is the lack of the use of weapons, you know. As I've been highlighting it. Uh, untrained soldiers can have, imagine, I'm, I'm just, I've just given you uh, two... Uh, possibilities that an untrained soldier can be in the field. Uh, think about the first one. South Africa is in war against uh, Russia. So all the soldiers of South Africa happen to die. Well, God forbid, they happen to die. <laughs> and from there, now the president gives a degree. He says, now pick anyone who seems strong <laughs> in the street. Anyone. Pick them. Let them come, we'll give them guns and we have, in, we, we have enough. We will, give, we will give them guns and they'll go to war. Now you think, in among them, one cannot manage to exchange the magazine of an AK-47. Presses one, the magazine is off. It's trying to shoot, there's no magazine. <laughs> Anara shoots and just shoots anyway. The magazine is empty, they don't know how to take it out. Now they throw the gun and pick a new one. That's how we are. I read a verse, I see it useless. I pass it. I read about genealogies. There's a reason they are there. Mm, the son of mm, mm, the son of mm, mm, the son of mm. Then I find new, no use in it. What do I do? I pass it. I even take it out of my head. If Jesus Christ said, if everything that was supposed to be written could have been written, not even the sky could have comprehended, then ask yourself, how much then was written? A summary of the very summary. So if whatever that was supposed to be written is not written, now God took whatever that was there, summarized it. And you know, a summary, you take important points. If they say summarize a three page into quarter a page, 
you're going to take very important points and not even say them all. You're going to say shorten them. You go to the book, it says, mm, the son of mm, mm, the son of mm. Those are three generations. If we were to say everything that was said in those three generations, even this book won't be enough. So that was summarized. After being summarized, we look at the summary and we see it useless. <laughs> I just look at the summary and say, I know, this is no use. The very summary is a weapon. Because now the devil will come and say, you are not a child of Abraham. Why? You missed the genealogy of Abraham. You don't even know that he connects to you through faith. So now you don't have the weight in you. You believe it. The philosophies of the world tell you, you are coming from a monkey. <laughs> and you believe it. <laughs> Looking at all those things is because of the lack of the use of the weapons we are carrying. We have them. I'm reading those genealogies. Even now I can go to uh, uh, the book of Luke. I can go to the book of Matthew. I can go to the book of Genesis chapter 7 and 8. They are there. I have them. Some of them I even have them in the head. But do I know how to use them? No. It shows I'm not trained enough. In. Who to blame me? Because I have refused to be trained. When I was supposed to be the one leading the chariots, I'm at the back, still leaning, baby steps. Why? Because I was entangling myself in the matters of this life. I forgot my duty as a soldier. I've forgotten that I'm in war, you know. Imagine you are warring against uh, Dubai. A war against Dubai and you get there, you, you land in Dubai for the first time. <laughs> you forget your gun and say, wow, I've always been wanted to be in this building, you know. Now taking selfies. <laughs> what will they do to you? You'll be finished. You'll be a past tense. <laughs> so <laughs> now looking at just that narrative, how it happens now in the spiritual realm. We have become so much excited. You know, the devil just makes sure that he brings enough pleasures to us. Things that will give pleasure to us. And you look at the pleasure, you last for it. Once you get it, you, pro you profited nothing. Later on, you think you're enough, you very last again. Because pleasure is like a stomach, it's never full. I'm telling you, you can eat 15 breads now. Tomorrow, by this time, you'll be hungry. That's a sure thing, that's pleasure. So if now I want to satisfy the very pleasures, I will forget about my, my peoples. I will forget my very, my very own mission. I will look at the map and not even know where to navigate it to. And people behind me want me to navigate them to a certain place. I even forgot where I'm going. I don't know where north is. I'm looking, I see south is being north. So now that is what an untrained soldier will do. And now I would like just us being here. Who can raise their hand and say, I'm trained enough? I am not also trained enough. I still need training. But who is training us? We are taking ourselves into the training camp. We obey. You know, a soldier, no matter how much terrible, no matter how much good the commander is, if a soldier doesn't want to be trained, nothing will happen. I'm telling you, bring the best teacher in class. If a learner doesn't want to teach, uh, doesn't want to learn, that learner will fail. I don't care how good the teacher is. The teacher might even beat the learner, I don't know how many times, but the learner will still fail. So it's not because of God that we are untrained. He has provided enough. He's provided all the instructions, all the, he, he said it. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 16. Actually, it's chapter 3, verse 16. He said, all scripture is a breath of God. What does it do? It says its function is for teaching us. Teaching us to do what? Its function is for instructing us in righteousness. Instructing us into what? It is for correcting us. It is for rebuking us. It is for reproof. What are we being corrected from? Are we also accepting the corrections? A brother comes to me and says, no, brother Brandon, the words you said, they're not proper. Please change them. And now pride comes in and says, who is this now? I've preached 55 sermons, and I preached only one. How can he correct me? 
I refused correction. How do I expect to be trained well? Then the very verse I'm quoting at the end, it says, for the perfecting of the saint, so that they can do the work of God in a perfect state. So it tells you the reason for this training is for you to be perfect. This training, reading the Bible and finishing it is not the end of your salvation. It's just the beginning of the beginning itself. You are just getting into the battlefield. You are holding a gun. The, the war just started for you. Though it has been waging for ages, since Adam was there, the war has been on. And the kingdoms that are fighting, the war is not going to stop anytime soon. And one thing I understand about this war we are fighting is that the, the, the moderate wars that we hear about, World War One, World War Two, they ended, right? They're no longer there. But the one that we are in is not ending anytime soon until one, one of the kingdoms is utterly abolished. And that is stated in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. That the enemy, which is the opposition, will be taken into the eternal fire, the, the, the fire that is burning forever. And all his prophets and all those who were following him, his agents, the demons, all of them, they will go in there. So now that kingdom will be totally taken out. That is when the war we can say now, the war is done, it's finished. I no longer have to wake up and watch my six. You know, in military, you have to watch your six. Watching your six means you have to watch your six o'clock. Look ahead and look behind at the same time. When you're walking, you can sense who is behind. Are we able to do that? Can you even sense in things you are doing that there are demons involved in there? If not, then you are not watching your six, you will be attacked. And in the attack, sometimes you won't notice. You'll notice later when things are already damaged. You're already in danger. Then you say, eh, now I'm being attacked. Then you raise a prayer point. We pray for you, it leaves, you go back again. <laughs> so now, <laughs> so now the only thing we are doing is to pray for you to get out. And when are you going back? <laughs> now we are starting to get entangled in the matters of this life. Now. <laughs> That's how it is. We are, we are in war. You take yourself into the danger. We are going to rescue you. We are no longer fighting now. <laughs> take your back, yourself back. We will go and rescue you. There will be a time where we will not be there. And who will rescue you? It's sad. Okay, let's read another verse. Let me not take too much time. Titus 1 verse 16. Uh, the book of Titus. It's a sad matter. Anyone who found it, please read it for us. Titus 1, verse 16. They claim to know God, but by their actions they deny Him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. Hmm. You do hear what that says now. It says, by our mouth, we claim to be good soldiers. We claim to be best snipers in the world. But by our very own acts, we are denying that. Because if a soldier comes to you and says, I am one of the best, just take them into the field and see. <laughs> and if you tell them to shoot a chicken and they shoot very far away from it, <laughs> you don't have to conclude twice. You know, just like in Revelation, when God is speaking to one of the churches, mm. he says, you, you, you seem to be alive. You seem to be having life, but you are dead. And being dead, your deeds are not pleasing before God. So some people speak very nicely. They, they wear very nicely. They seem to be very nice. They seem powerful, actually. But go to the actual part themselves engaging in the spirit they are nothing actually demons are just coming and living spirits are just coming and living it's sad as you look at a person because prophesying doesn't say you are saved it's a mission you have which you have to perfect 
for the people that you are working with. Because in war, soldiers, once they, then they, 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 they disunite, there's a very less chance of winning. They have to be united. And in that unit, they use different things for the sake of the group. If I have a map, it's not for me, it's for the entire group. If I have a bazooka, it's for the entire group. If I have a hand grenade and the rest do not have, it is not for me, it is for the entire group. So now if I'm a prophet and I'm using it for my own, I have messed up. If I am a teacher of the weight and I'm using it for my own, I'm teaching myself, I have messed up. Because we are a group. We are supposed to be working as well. If you read Acts 2, it says, and they were in one accord. Not all of them were prophets. Not all of them were teachers. But they held each other and they worked together. And in that, the Spirit of God helped them even. And we can see the wonders that they did. And those miracles were not the end of the work. It was just the beginning. Because the minute the devil sees that now you have moved up in ranks, he is coming after you. But we shouldn't be scared because we have greater weapons. Only if we know how to use them. The way we have, I'm telling you, a demon can, can try to terrorize me. I just pick a way to live. Instead of struggling ages and ages, oh, I've been struggling with depression, why I've been struggling with this, you are having a weapon. <laughs> Use it. <laughs> Just speak the way, did you leave? I have tried that personally, it works. You look at Paul, he was beaten by a snake. What did it do to him? Did he die? Did they rush him to hospital? No, because he had a greater weapon. And he knew how to use it. If he was beaten by a snake before he was saved and before he, he was trained, he was going to be rushed to hospital. But now he was beaten by a snake while he was trained, well trained. Because in, in the war we are in, you know, we are not tangling ourselves into the matters of the flesh. I get sick, I notice this is a spiritual thing. Quickly deal with it. I tell the spirit, leave you. I'm sitting down and a, a, a bad thought comes to my mind. It says, ah, let's do this. I speak to it immediately. I don't waste time. I tell it, hey, chief, thought, leave. It comes again, thought, leave. And it will live forever. It will no longer come back. Yes, it may seem like a joke. You know, or we are playing. Imagine talking to your thoughts. <laughs> but that is the weapon. Isn't it? That a hand granite is very amazing. You're just holding something that is in the size of a rock. You just pull a little pin, you throw it, wherever you take it to. It is making buckets to disappear. <laughs> Things that is just a hand granite, just like you're holding it, you just send it. That's it. Pull it, send it into the right target. Now, sometimes we are casting out demons of slumber while they are demons of depression. That demon of depression won't live. It wants you to call it by name sometimes and say, hey, leave. <laughs> that, that's when it don't want to leave. So if you are applying the way, don't apply it on the wrong thing. Apply it on the right thing. That is the training. I believe we, we can talk about the training itself sometimes. Uh, I hope, I hope that one of these days we talk about the training. On what this training is. How, how do you be trained in the way? But it's all there. I'm, I'm not in good position to be teaching you all these things. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. You just have to let him guide you. When he speaks, take it. Look at Philip. I gave an example last time that if Philip was a procrastinator, you know, he was going to be waken up by the angel and he say, go to the way of Gaza. And he said, oh, let, let me brush my teeth. Uh, let, let me wear some shoes. Ah, man, let me relax here until the sun come up. Things like that. That man is passing with a chariot. Because when the Holy Spirit tells you to do a thing, there is an agency for it. There's something important. When God told Moses, he said, go to my people and release them. There was an agency for it. The 400 years was complete. They needed to go out. If Moses was like, ah, man, I'll go after three years, nyana, let me enjoy this place, or let me say bye-bye to them, things like that. He didn't care about those things. <laughs> and you notice Moses is a very good example of a soldier. Before he was a soldier of God, he was still under training. He ran away from Pharaoh, of which it was a kingdom on its own. 
he ran away. He went to the uh, to, to 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 a place where he became a shepherd for forty years. Then the very same man who ran away. Now, when he's sent by God, given enough weapons, God even showed him how to utilize the very things he had. He gave him the weight. He gave him everything that he needed. And God said to him, go. Moses didn't go to soldiers and say, ah, let me go and vote some soldiers and we will go. He didn't say that. He didn't go and buy more guns, no. All he did was to take that road. And when he met Aaron on the road, just thinking it because I like thinking it throughout in my imaginations. He's now coming up, up from a mountain. Down as he's walking, he meets Aaron. In meeting Aaron, Aaron is asking, hey, where are you going, bro? Moses says, I'm going back to Egypt to deliver the people of Israel. Now Aaron is confused. Even. You ran away, now you're going back. And not just going back, but to deliver them. And perhaps Aaron was asking, eh, then where are the soldiers? Then Moses said, no, I don't have soldiers. I only have this rod <laughs> against swords, against giants, against magicians. Only a rod. But that rod was not just a rod. It was a rod that was given by God. And it had power. It had enough tools. Now we are going to war. What do we have? Only the Bible. Only this book. They will be asking you, how do you succeed so much? Only this book. How do you deliver demons? Go to this book. How do I do this, this book? All of it is just in the, this is the rod of Moses that we are carrying today. By it, we are just commanding things and they come to pass. I touch the dust, turns into mosquitoes. I touch the Red Sea, it parts. By this book. You touch a spirit, it lives. Jesus Christ gave them authority. It gave us authority. He says, those who believe, the signs of them believing shall be casting out of devils. The signs of trained soldiers shall be when they go to where devils are, are, are camping and they dismantle their camping place. Those, those devils, however angry they can be, they will never touch you. Because there's a greater kingdom, in, which is the kingdom we are in. But it's sad that we don't see where we are. It said we are so much into the worldly things. Sad, too sad. Okay, um, very quick, let's read another verse. I hope like um, Matthew 28, verse 18. Mm, yeah, I will, I will read it very quick. I won't comment much. I, I hope. I said it's a short message, but hey, it's just a sad thing. Just a sad thing to say. Okay, Matthew 28, um, from verse 18. Jesus said unto them, All power is given to me in earth and in authority, uh, and, and in, uh, in, in, in heaven and in earth. Well, I'm thinking about another version which says, All authority is given unto me. I don't know if in, any of us has it here. It says, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then he says, go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And, Lord, I am with you always, and even unto the end of the world. Amen. What a nice way to finish a book. But looking at that, Jesus Christ he declares, he says, all power. So if you are in his kingdom and you know how to utilize, utilize the, the, the tools that he has given us, what are you to be scared of? Look at the disciples. Once they understood how to use the tools in Acts, they were beaten in the temples, I mean, in, in, in the courts. They were beaten and they got out happy. <laughs> they were running happy and they said, yeah, we were persecuted for the glory of God. Because they knew they are, they, they are more than conquerors. They have conquered even the world they are fighting. So we have conquered. But the question is, as having been conquered, our kingdom having been conquered, are we still to be conquered by the enemy himself? 
because it says some shall depart from faith, giving heat to seducing spirits, showing that the enemy, though he is conquered, but he's still fighting. He's still warring against us. Paul says he blinds the people so that they don't see his schemes. He, he puts a blindfold in you. Though you hear about things happening, you don't understand why they are happening. Now if I have to ask us, to ju just to show that I also I am not as trained as, as, as I would like to be. If I ask, where are we in the calendar of God now? You know, the way there is where Moses will come and deliver Israel. The way there is where Isaiah had to go and prophesy against the nation. The way there is where Habakkuk will say, uh, will write a, a vision so that when a person reads it, will run. The way there is where Jesus Christ was walking on earth. Now what we do is to have the past tense. What is the present tense? What is God doing today? Where are we in the calendar of God? Where are we? How many trumpets? Like the brother asks. <laughs> he asked the question. He said, the, in, in the sound of the last trumpet, we shall be taken away. Have we had the first trumpet? <laughs> Have we had it? Had it happened? We don't know. It's sad because we are not trained. Do we know if the second trumpet is, 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 is sounded? In what church are we? Because the, the, there are churches, you know. Paul is speaking into the church in Ephesus. Another one is speaking to the church in another place. In what church are we? Do we know that? No. Why? Because we are entangling too much in the things of the world. When I wake up, I look at WhatsApp five hours or three hours, and I don't get so tired. You know? But the minute I touch the weight, two verses are enough. Then I expect to be powerful in the weight. Mm, shame on me. <laughs> shame on me. <laughs> we have to dine on the weight. Like, be in into the weight. One brother speaks about how really to get the weight to the heart. He says the heart, uh, it has so many doors. For you to go to it, you will have to pass many things. And one of the ways to pass through those many things is by fully focusing on one thing. He says, look at the weight without any disturbance and read it with full understanding. For example, when I'm reading the weight and in my mind I'm thinking about home, whatever I'm reading is not going in. Never. I'm reading the weight and someone is talking and I'm listening to them. My goal is to finish what I'm reading, not to get it in. It will never be in the heart. Or you read the weight and in reading it, you have your own thoughts about it. You are expecting it to say something. You are reading Revelation. You say, yeah, man, now this one must do this. <laughs> you are reading, yeah, there must be a white horse somewhere. Now you are looking for a white horse. You are missing everything. I'll give an example. If now someone from outside this room was told and said, go and look for a brother with a cat. The person will enter, look at everyone and not see them. And look at the brother and say, okay, I've seen the person in the cap. Look at everything about you and leave. Then they're asked outside. They are, okay. They will ask two then. <laughs> they will look at two. After that, they will ask him about brother Tsiamu. What will they say about him? They've never seen him. Yes, they might have seen him, but they did not perceive. Because they think, there was a thing they were looking for. They got it and now they are leaving. That's how some of us are in the way. I'm going there to justify my own acts. I'm missing the entire commandment. I'm missing everything. That's why we, we, we can go into one commandment, pick it and miss everything, and come back with it. Like the verse that says, um, a man shall not wear anything pertaining to a woman. How many commandments are there before that? But I was looking for that one verse. I've missed everything. I, I, even now I don't know how many verses are behind that. Because when I go there, I'm going for a specific thing which I want, not what the person who trains me want, but what I want. There are things I want to do. There are things I want to get. Which is sad. Brother John Piper also spoke, he said, like, it's a video I want to send to the group. He says, sometimes a Christian had nothing changed in him. The very source of happiness, the very things that are making him happy, are the very things that they made him happy when he was in the world. 
I got happy by partying, you know, but now just that I'm partying with a, a, a saved group, you know, now that makes it right. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy that I was speeding in car, but now when I'm speeding, I'm having my Bible on my right side. You know, <laughs> it's better. <laughs> sad. It's sad. It's so sad that like being trained, I refuse to be trained. I want to be trained how I want to be trained. Someone comes and say, I want to be a prophet. Though the trainer says, no, your place is to be a pastor. That person refuses, says, hey, I'm going to be a prophet. Tangles with prophets, goes all the way. That person might call themselves a believer, it's fine. But are they doing what believers do? Which is obeying the word of God. I sh let's, let's move quick and read another verse. Hebrews 5 verse 12. I have, I've read it actually. Someone can just read it quick if they have it. Uh, I have quoted it. Hebrews uh, 5 verse 12. Hmm. Yeah, it's clear. It says, although there's a time for you to be teachers, though, for you to start instructing others. Some of us have been in Christianity for a long time. That by now we we're supposed to be verifying. We we're supposed to have made disciples. But even now we don't know anything. We are talking about prayer. We are asking, how should we pray? <laughs> when I am supposed to be the one teaching the people how to pray, there are days I look at brethren who just grew up, now now in the spirit, and now they are moving, might I get happy, very happy. Then now I go to those who have grown up in church. They, since birth they were in a church, they started believing in Christ at the age of nine. Yes, moving, yes. But looking at the time they have spent since they said they are believing, and now, they have done so much less. 10% of what someone was born yesterday have done. So looking at that, we have went through much chance of training, but still we are not ready. The way they, if, if it, it was by chance, you know, counting how many years you've been saved for, and look at how many times you could have finished the Bible, but you didn't finish it. Why? Because you don't have time for it. The goal is not to finish it, it's to get every weight that is supposed to be getting into your heart. And one way to do that is to go through the entire Bible. I for sure haven't finished the entire Bible in a genealogical matter. But I have read most books. And the books I have been reading, I have been reading with understanding. And I have been trying. Yes, I don't read the Bible every day, but I try. And then trying, if God gives me power, with trying, how much more about if I start doing now? Every day I wake up, I read the word. Not just read the word, in the morning only, but during the day, at night, start reading. Even the songs we sing sometimes, they show we don't read the word. Totally show, it shows. I won't say them because some of you might be discouraged. <laughs> But it shows we don't read the word. Because you can hear like this song, uh, um, this person <laughs> doesn't have the word in them. Now I'll give you one example. There's another song that says, uh, Saul, you are my son. Like, Saul, you my son. Things like that. <laughs> now you are thinking like, Saul, you are son. Why not choose Paul? Saul was a terrorizer of people of God. And now they are saying, uh, in heaven they are crying about you. I don't remember reading about that. I don't remember angels crying about Saul. I don't remember that. Rather it was the church crying to God. So now when a person sings that I fully understand, they fully don't understand. That's what I know. And many other songs. Some I, I also like the tune, but when I, I deep inside I notice there is no word of God here. There is nothing. Like It's like we are playing with each other. There's nothing serious. Because songs are not for playing. If you go to the scriptures, 
Songs are not for playing. Songs are for entering even into the holy zone. David says, enter unto the gate of God with a, with a praise. So now, are, are we entering somewhere with our songs? Are we going anywhere? Or are we just circling in one place? Keeping our hearts, you know, emotions uh, <laughs> up. You feel a, a disturbance in your emotions and you say the Holy Spirit was there. What did he say then if he was there? <laughs> or he was just there visiting? <laughs> Let's read another verse. Mark 16, verse 16. I think this will be the last verse. I hope. So that I just stop talking a lot. <laughs> Mark 16, verse 16. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verse 16. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Let me just proceed a bit. Verse 17. Up to the end. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they shall oh, they, they will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and con confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. <laughs> um, so, it says in the last verse, it says the Lord working with them. It shows they were doing some work. They were not doing it for fun. Some, like some of us, yes, we preach for fun. You know? When I show people that we can preach, we are teaching so that people can. That's why a preacher will always seek something new to say to the people. Always, I wanna surprise people. You know? And one of them we, we were discussing with the brother. One of them is the one of taking from another language. I feel like I've said something very important. <laughs> I'm saying this, this thing, maybe let's say I'm preaching about love. I say love, you know, in Hebrew it is called agape. You know? <laughs> I feel like I've said so much importance, of which the devil is not even shaken by that. But if you look at here, because no, I'm not saying saying them is wrong. I also say them. I also talk about the spirit to say it is pneuma. And being pneuma, pneuma means a breath also it means a spirit also meaning this weight which is closer to the original translation doesn't refer to a spirit only when it says christ breathed unto them he was imparting a spirit because according to that version okay let me not talk too much about that but it says the lord was waking with them so the lord was there in their midst he did the work and in doing the work there was change. There was, it was seen that there is something happening here. They were moving somewhere. You look at the, the, the church was growing. There was a change happening. The people who were sick, they were healed. There was a time where I think it was Peter, who, whose mother was having fever. And Jesus Christ healed her. So in the group Christ was moving with, they, they, they were becoming sorted. Now they were sorting others. But what about us? We are unsorted all over again and all over again. Financially, we are broke. What is the problem? <laughs> emotionally drained. How are we even going to help someone who is emotionally drained? If us ourselves who declare to, uh, who, who claim to call ourselves believers, we are emotionally drained, depressed. When someone is coming depressed, you are telling them your story also. So that they will become more depressed. <laughs> Jesus Christ never did that. <laughs> he never did that. Every time he'll use the waiting. Actually, it's, it's sad. It's sad. I don't know how many times I can try to mention that it is sad. And how many times it can be spoken. You know? Jesus Christ commanded them. He said, Go unto the world and preach the gospel. Well, there are many other verses I, 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 I was wishing to read, like the one that says you are ambassadors. 
an ambassador is someone who lives in a different kingdom and they are from another kingdom and that ambassador is sponsored fully by the kingdom they are coming from now jesus christ here is sending them out into the world he is not the world they are not the world he is sending them into another kingdom and as they are going he is fully sponsoring them he says i will be with you even unto the end of the world so being with them, he has sent them. The only thing they have to do is just to act. Philip, I was giving an example, was sleeping. An angel came, woke him up. He didn't say, oh, let me take the last nap. <laughs> <laughs> he got up immediately. He went to where he was sent. And a man who was having the treasures of a queen of Ethiopia was saved on that day. So what change are we bringing? Are we giving excuses? Because the Holy Spirit is there. He said, I will not leave you alone, but I will leave you with the comfort. I will leave you with the helper. And he says, he shall guide you into all truth, which is John 16, verse 18. He says, the Holy Spirit shall guide you into all truth. And if you, you check it well, a guide doesn't do the work for you. They show you how the work should be done by you. So him guiding you, he's showing you how you should be doing it. But because he has guided us, you know, and he has shown us how, how it is done, he has done it, then we no longer do it. He's showing us how to cast demons out. Here we do it. Are we doing it? No. A sad part of it. A sad part of it. Yeah, some of us will try while untrained, which is the danger of it. Totally untrained, I don't even know how, how a demon looks like, you know. <laughs> and I could be screaming. Get out, get out. <laughs> because I've seen some, some preacher on the TV trying it. I'm pushing people, trying them to fall, things like that. <laughs> At the end of the day, no demon went out. <laughs> and you look at in the new in the old in the New Testament, like when Jesus Christ was coming by. He went into a church. When he found someone with a demon, he didn't scream. It, it, it never says that. Rather, it, it was the demon screaming. But today we have changed things. We are the ones screaming and demons are just quiet. Have <laughs> 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 we done any good? I don't know. <laughs> because screaming, to be honest, screaming, when Jesus gave authority, he never spoke about screaming. I'm giving you an example. In a temple, it doesn't say Christ was screaming. It says demons screamed. When they screamed, Christ said, keep quiet and get out. In some of the, these churches we have, when a person has a demon, we take them out of the church. What, are, what is happening? They are living with the demon. Later on, they will come back with the demon. We start again, we take them out of church. They are living with the demon. <laughs> they will come back with it. Rather, Christ was taking out the demon out of a person. I remember one case of another brother, yes, I'm just done. He says he was take, casting out demons, you know, expelling them from a person. Why, why am I speaking about casting out of demons? Because that is the essence of the work we have. It says those who believe, it doesn't say prophets, it doesn't say uh, pastors, it doesn't say priests, it doesn't say evangelists. It says those who believe, this shines, this signs shall follow them. In my name, they will cast out devils. In my name, they will cast out devils. So everyone can do it, but are we trained enough to do it? And what is the importance of casting out devils is because devils torment. They torment believers. They don't just torment them. If there was last time we shared about uh, the life of demons on earth, we saw how devils can damage the physical being of a person. A devil can enter and cause blindness to you. That's why Christ came. He just spoke a word. Sometimes the very blindness will live in a person will see it because a spirit was blinding them. I gave an example of a woman oh, for 12 years. It says she was having an issue of blood. So physically damaged. By what? By a devil. So how are we going to work for God if we are physically damaged? So for us to be free from the bondage of devils, we have to cast them out. We have to take them out. And once they're out, we are free now. They will try to invite us, you know, but we don't care about what they're doing. 
We don't care about what they're inviting us to. What we care about is the work we came here for. Is that the case? I doubt. That means something has to change. A devil will come to keep you away from worshipping God. Will come to keep you away from saving God. You have just done something that the devil led you to. Now you have to go to church to fix the chairs and you are saying in your heart, hey, I'm dirty now. I can't go. You send a text, please do this. What is happening? A devil has successfully accomplished his own mission by stopping you from going to God. David, right after sin, he will go back to God and repent. Are we doing that? No, after sin, we go back to the very sin. We are running away from God. Hey, I'm a sinful man, you know. I'll come when I'm, I'm clean. You will never be clean. Because he is the one who will make you clean. So as I was saying, one brother was, was uh, expelling some devils. And then one man, I don't know what kind of a devil it was, that was in him, an unclean spirit. So one man was so impatient, you know, very impatient. And he said, man, I don't see the devil going out as yet. <laughs> Let me go. <laughs> we will cast it another day. <laughs> and the brother said to the man, there are two cases here. Either you live and the devil will live with you, or you remain and the devil will live without you. Which one do you choose? You can guess the men remained <laughs> and the devil indeed left. And from there, once you go back, there are many sermons about that, there are many teachings about that. But one thing I just wanted us to highlight today to not forget is the soldiers we are. We are soldiers. You know? And being soldiers, we have all resources, we have everything. When Paul said, put on the full armor of God, he, he said, you put it on. Because a soldier, uh, I don't go to war and other soldiers are making me wear things. You know. A bulletproof, it is them. A breastplate, it is them choosing to wear it. If you don't wear it, you will suffer for not having it. Because the devil will know where the weak link is. He will know, oh, his head is not having a helmet. Let me... And now he brings thoughts because the helmet is about thoughts, the head. The devil brings a lot of thoughts. So when once you put on the salvation, the, 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 the very helmet of salvation, you are protecting your thoughts. So no evil thoughts will come to you. You will never think evil things. But I don't care how strong you are, how you have put the belt of truth, exercising the very sword and whatever that you have. If you are having all the five... Uh, armors, uh, uh, parts of, of, of the armor and you don't have the helmet of salvation, the devil will come there. He'll bring evil, evil, evil thoughts in. There's a brother I know like he's very mighty, we used to preach together, but one of the days he just said I'm killing myself today. And he drank poison. Luckily we, we knew about the matter, we prayed and he was saved. So looking at that, the devil knew that this man has the sword. All those things, but this man couldn't utilize the sword well, and he attacked the weaker link. Now you wear everything, you don't wear the shoes, which is called the readiness of what of the gospel. Because we are fighting. I'm not if if, if I am fighting, I have all the weapons and I sit down, and there are people who are in job party. That means I am saving myself and them, it's okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's why I have to go out. And when I go out, what do I do? I free people from spirits. Once they are free, I teach them. Once I have taught them, they are in Christ, they have the Holy Spirit, my part is done. I go to the next person. Look at, look at Paul, look at Peter. There was a time Jesus Christ was with him, teaching him. And there was a time Jesus Christ left him for him to go and teach others. And whoever he taught, there was a time for them to learn and a time for them to go and teach. So with us, it's said that we are learning wire wire. <laughs> There's no time for us to go and teach. <laughs> it's said, but let me not talk too much. There was a question. It's fine, okay. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's said. There's still a lot of things. My heart is not yet well you know, about this matter. Because it's a serious matter and a heavy thing. But time won't permit me to speak everything. 
that there is. Because you look at, in all the ages, this war has been very serious. This, this war has been very serious. You find a Christian who doesn't even have an idea, even a single idea of what evil spirits are. And yet they're in the very church, you know. Not just in church. They're even in families. They're everywhere. What we have to do is to exercise the weapons we have. And I don't know if you'll agree with me as my last talk, my, my last statement, I believe. <laughs> if you are fighting with someone and you are carrying a knife and they are carrying a gun and the gun is more powerful than the knife then somehow you notice that they are shaking in the very gun they are not even holding it straight what are you going to do? are you going to be scared? <laughs> the only thing you will be scared about is let them not shoot at anywhere let me go and grab that gun you know? And you will take it. After it is taken, the person is powerless. No? That's exactly what the devil does. He's looking at you. You are shaking while holding the weight. You are not sure which to apply, which to not. You are just shaking. After you are shaking, what does it say? Jesus Christ speaks about the parable of a seed, uh, 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 the seed. He says there was a man who was going out into the field. He was throwing his seed. Some of the seed fell into the rough ground some into the way, some into the thorns, and some on the good way. He says that is a man who is preaching the word. When they preach and the ground is the heart of a person, he says the heart that is by the wayside, birds will come and pick up the seed. He says the heart that is by the wayside is a person who listens to the word and they are convicted but like they believe it. They say, wow, that's true. But later on the devil comes, takes away the word. Jesus Christ said that. He says the enemy comes to take the weight. Why? Because he is taking the weapon away from you. Are not, you don't know how to use it. So even if you were to kill him, but you wouldn't kill him because you don't know how to use that gun. You are shaking in it. You, you don't even know that you are holding it. <laughs> Some of us. The weight is there. It's for us. Yeah, I, next time we'll talk about the armor of God. We will discuss each and every detail, starting from the helmet, coming to the sword, the very shield of salvation. If God wills, we will come to talk about that. I think that is just.